Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. Let's create a stem and leaf plot. A stem and leaf plot is a display of data that maintains the data values. After we've created our display, we will still be able to see our data values. And it does a good job of showing the differences in each class or category of our data. A stem and leaf plot always shows quantitative data. So here we have a stem and leaf plot and a stem and leaf plot is going to always have in the leaf's position, the last important digit of the data set. And then the other values will be the first, those will be your stem. Whatever's left over will be the stem. Let me start by just creating one for you with these ACT scores. So in this case, the last important digit of our data values is in the ones place. This ones place, the numbers in the one place are gonna be our leaves. Then the remaining beginning numbers, the tens place will be our stem. So I'm gonna start by looking at the stems of each of those. And the stems are really our categories, our classes or our bins. So in this case, we're gonna have tens, we're gonna have twenties, and we're gonna have thirties that are our categories or our classes. The three is the highest number and the one is the smallest. So I'm gonna have three different categories here, one, two, and three. Then, the ones place will be my leaves. So for instance, this eight, this 18 will be written as one eight. That represents the number 18, that data value. This 23, I put a three there with the 20 so that I have 23. To put 24, it's also in this category. So it's 24 goes in that category as well. 31, is in our 30s category, and 19 is here in the teens category. I'm gonna do that for each one of my data values. So that this is 23, 24, 27, 26, 22, 32, 18, 35, 27, 29, 24, 20, 18, 17, 21, 25, and 26. So we can clearly see that there are more values in our 20s than there are in any other category. Now, as we make a stem and leaf plot, I've, done a, I've made a few mistakes. There are some things I need to fix because one thing we do with our leaves is we always put them in order from least to greatest. So in this case, I have a seven, three eighths, and a nine. I should write it so that my seven is first, and then I have those three eighths, and then a nine. It shows the same data, but it now has them in the correct order. So that I have 17, 18, 18, 18, and 19. I'm gonna do the same thing with my 20s here, so that I put them in the correct order. So I have a zero, a one, one, two, one, three, two, fours. Let me just start there. Zero, one, one, two, one, three, two, fours, one, five, there were two sixes, two sevens, and a nine. So that they're all in the correct order. And then this one already is in the nice least to greatest order. So there's my data. Now, another thing to notice is that notice that the columns line up with one another. They should be equally spaced and those columns should line up with one another so that we know that at this point, these two are the same. They have the same values. You know, there are three data values up to that point. 
If you turn your head sideways, you can kind of look at it as an histogram. You know, if I had drawn my bars around it like this, it's like I have a histogram that's showing those frequencies of how many are in each one. So, but the difference between this and a histogram is that we actually maintain our data values. So, um, we, and we can clearly see that there are more in the 20s than the other two. I'm going to do the same thing with my starting salaries. I'm going to create a stem and leaf plot. So with the stem and leaf plot, I'm going to look for my last important value. And my last important number here is actually, notice that all of my data values have zeros. So my last important value is actually in the hundreds place. So those are going to be my leaves. Then my stems on these salaries are going to be the, um, the ten thousands and the thousands place. So I'm going to look for the smallest of these um, stems, and my smallest stem is going to be in the 40s. So that's my smallest stem. Let me write stem up there. And my smallest stem is going to be at 40. And now my largest stem, if I look, my largest stem is at 51. So I'm going to count my stems down all the way to 51. So I've got 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, and 51. Now my leaves are going to be those hundreds places. So I'm just going to add my leaves. I'm going to go through my data values and I'm going to add the leaves to it. So um, let's see if I can do it in order this time. I have 40,700 and then 40,900. So this seven on here means 40,700. And then I'm going to put the nine. There's 40,900. There aren't any that are 41,000, so I'm just going to leave this blank. If there aren't any in that category, we just leave it so that there are no data values there. Then at 42, I have three different um, data values that are at 42. Um, there's 42,500, there's 42,700, um, and then there's 42,900. Now, I'm going to do the 42, or 40, I'm sorry, that was at 42, so 42. Let me fill in the rest of this stem and leaf plot. Okay, I've put all of our data values on our stem and leaf plot. So, we can see clearly that the 46,000 has the most data values in that class or that category. Whereas 41,000 has the least because it doesn't have any in there. But all of our data values here, like this 46,100, is represented on my data, on my stem and leaf plot, 46,100. Notice again, the columns line up so that we can tell that these are all the same. I have two values there. Our columns line up. And then, um, we have them from least to greatest. Also, um, let's count to see, make sure I have all the data values on there. We can count our leaves to see how many salaries there were. So there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 data values. And sure enough, we had uh, uh, five by six, so there are 30 data values here. One other really important thing on a stem and leaf plot is there must be a key. So this one here, how do we know that that's 46,100? My reader's not gonna know that. How do they know, how, do my, how does my reader know that this is 17 and not 1,700? So every steam and leaf plot must have a key to show what those values are. So like in this case, I'm just gonna add a key somewhere around my stem and leaf plot. 
that just says that this stem of pick a number two and a line with a leaf of uh, a leaf of say five and that's equal to 25 so that's my key it shows that two five is equal to 25 whereas over here I need a key as well somewhere I need I didn't give myself enough room here but I'm gonna make myself a key so that my reader knows that just pick any old value it can be any one off of there so say 48 2 that what that's equal to is 48,200. So that key is super, super important on a stem and leaf plot so that your reader knows that this is not just 482, but it's 48,200. Then with all of our displays, there needs to be a title. So in this case, it's the salaries, starting salaries. So that needs, you know, I need to have a title to let my reader know what my data shows. And over here, my data is that ACT T scores. So uh, the great thing about a stem and leaf plot is I can actually still see my data values. That's what's so great about it is that I don't lose my data values. And yet I can see real clearly that this category or class has the most and that one has the least and how spread my data is. I can look at that spread and see that it's pretty evenly spread amongst there. I can also see how many categories I have or classes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different classes in that stem and leaf plot. So stem and leaf plots are a great display for maintaining your data values when you have quantitative data. Math Made Simple is some math. Thanks for watching.